we are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Mondo Market TV. Today here on Crafting with Shalin, you're going to love what we're going to do together. But, but before we get started, don't forget to share. Yes, like, comment, and share. In fact, we have a cool giveaway. We're gonna give away a pattern, the pattern of what we're going to do together. So definitely a must have. A lucky winner will be announced at the end of the day today. And in order for you to get entered to win, like, comment, and share where you're watching. Bring your friends, come one, come all. We're here to have a good time together, craft together, just friends hanging out. So do that right now. So Shalin, how are you? I am good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm fantastic. <laughs> yes, I'm so happy that we're we're on today. Wednesday's my favorite day. Oh, I'm here with crafting with Shalin. <laughs> so tell us what we're gonna do. Well, what is really gonna be fun today is we have a pattern that we're gonna demo today for you from Sanders Designs. And it's so cute. It's the cutest little Frankenstein you've ever seen. Adorable. And he really is cute, and it's not a pattern that you see often. In fact, I've never seen one that looks like it. Look so. how cute he is. He's amazing. He's really, really cute. He's going to be a lot of fun for you to paint. Um, he's going to be a lot of fun for you to display on some of your um, buffets or whatever it is that you decorate with for Halloween. He's going to look really cute, and he's going to be fun to, to start and paint with. So I'm really excited to show you this today, and I'm also excited because it's actually uh, one of my father's patterns. Aww. So my artist father, who is watching. Hi, Dad. Wait, wait, um, wait a minute. What's what about this artist father? <laughs> My artist father can do just about anything. He he has a whole range of talents, and I, I'm always so impressed with what he does. And he painted these, and I'm gonna try and replicate what he painted because. He is one of my teachers, so he's Amazing. really good. So really, really good. Check it out. We've got Bree. She says hi, ladies. Bree, she's hi. watching from outside, so she won't be able to chat, but she's there watching. Hi. Uh, we're welcoming Kay. We're welcoming Kim. Welcome, welcome. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Like, comment, and share to be entered share, to share, win. Okay. Share. All right. Awesome. Okay. Well, what we're gonna do is we are going to start out with. I'm gonna show you the basics first. So when you get your kit there's gonna be a piece of wood in your kit, just like this. And you are gonna to want to start out with um, a sandpaper, and you're gonna to want to just lightly sand it. So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you take all the, the little rough edges off, get everything there, and then um, you're gonna to wanna to sand the top of it right here. This is called MDF, and I've been around MDF my whole entire life, it feels like, I don't know probably since I was a teenager. But um, it's, a, it's a, I think it's called Maximum Density Fiberboard and it's a pressed wood. And so with this, you're gonna want to, after you sand it down, because um, some of the woods you get, you'll have a rough spot on the top. And so you wanna make sure that when you sand it, you are just making it as smooth as possible. So you'll have just a nice smooth, so. Oh, yeah. Is that smooth? Oh, yeah. So it's, it's like a silky smooth. smooth. Super silky. But in some of my other classes I've, I've taught, we talk about these tack cloths, and I really like the tack cloths a lot. So I'm going to show you. After you sand it, you're going to want to make sure that you absolutely wipe it down. You can wipe it down with a wet rag, but um, talking from experience here, the wet rag will raise your wood again. So you oh. don't want to do that. So this is an extremely tacky um, piece of cloth that just takes all the sawdust, all your little bits and pieces away, and it'll just clean everything up. It'll so give you some time and frustration. Yes, because when you're painting and then all of a sudden you get this big glob of like sawdust and you know, then you've got to clean up your area and then resand it to try and, and fix your paint. So and you can see just by doing that how much is left on there. So it'll take off a lot. And I really like the tack cloth. So with the MDF, you absolutely should put um, a coat of gesso, white gesso, or um, gesso or gesso? Hmm. Oh my gosh. Gesso, I think? I just had a brain cramp. Soft G, maybe? It's It's just a soft white paint. <laughs> But you're gonna seal, just seal your wood so you have a nice smooth surface that you could actually transfer a pattern onto and paint. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to transfer our pattern 
And he really is just a cute little guy. I mean, he's not scary. He's not ugly. He's, no, he's just... he's a friendly guy. He is. He's like Casper the Friendly Ghost. This is <laughs> Frank the Friendly Friend. So, you know, we've, we've got a couple of, of really cool uh, scary things here. But so what I'm going to do is this... I really like medical tape. I told you guys last time, I love medical tape. I love painting tape. I love it all. But for me to keep my pattern onto my paper without it taking off anything, this is what I do. And I'll probably just do this in half. And it, when you pull it off of your paper too, it doesn't rip your paper. By the way, we got so. Sandy watching. She says, hello. Hi, hello, Sandy. Sandy. Welcome back. Welcome. Okay. So we're gonna just put our pattern under here. Hey Sandy, we have a drawing going on. Like, comment, and share yes, where you're watching. Yes, please. And you might just be the lucky winner. And it will be the pattern for what we're doing today. So it's um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's get that down. And then I sometimes will just kind of fold my paper under because I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing and I'm actually transferring the right area. So I'm just going to go like this. And now we transfer. And I know some people already know how to do this. There are some people that don't. So this is just a refresher course. But I actually, um, on these, I will do everything. So basically just trace it with the pencil. Trace it with the pencil. And don't press too hard. And don't rub your hands up and down too hard on the pattern because you could end up getting a lot of um, carbon paper marks and we don't want that. So he's just fun and easy to do. And I really like his little personality. And I hope I do my dad justice because, you know, I'm his favorite, as we call it, not head. So <laughs> he's pretty awesome. By the way, we've got the Sandys are in the house. Sandys are here, <laughs> we yes. We have uh, Sandra from the UK <gasps> and from the US watching. Oh, hi, everybody. That's awesome. We have a really great audience. I really enjoy um, hearing from everybody. So I am doing almost every single line on here. Oh, but I made that a little big, so I'm going to have to fix that. But. Um, Oh, I see how you fix that. <laughs> I'm going to erase it and look with my finger. No. So um, I'm not going to end up doing too much of this little bit of a detailed work because I'll be painting over it. But I really, when you, when you get this pattern, you're going to love just creating this cute little guy. You'll love it. You'll have a lot of fun with it. By the way, if you're wondering, okay, so this is super cute. I need it. How do I get it? I tell you, go to mondomarkettv.com. That's where you get it. During the next 24 hours, we have a cool introductory price. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. Look how adorable this kit is. So now let me tell you about the kit. It comes with, um, it's uh, the wood kit. This, so you can make this adorable Frankenstein. It comes with the cutout and the wood base, as well as two screws, the pattern and instruction for you to follow along. This is just perfect for your Halloween yep. decor. So go to mondomarkettv.com right now to get yours. You're going to love it. This is definitely a fun project for you to do yes. by yourself or with some friends or with kids. Definitely great, great uh, one to do. So I highly encourage you to go there right now. And you know, he's not scary. So when your no. kids do it, I know when I was growing up, Frankenstein to me was freaky. <laughs> he was ugly. And um, this this guy is, he's pretty classy. He's got a little soft spot in his heart, which is really <laughs> kind of cool. So we're gonna just keep transferring this, this pattern over. Kay said that she just shared this cutie. Thank you, oh, Kay. Thank you, Kay. Yep, it's a good one. Um, Halloween's coming up, and I don't know how many of you decorate, but I love when I get patterns like this and I create something and I put it into my foyer or on my buffet table or on my table itself because it just is cute. And this is a great thing to pass down to your kids. Yeah. So if you create this, like my dad, you know, painted these and I'm not getting them back. So, you know, they're going to be mine. I'll put it with my stuff. 
But it's like so cool because these are things that you can pass down to your kids as well. So crafting is, you know, not only a piece of your heart, but it's also sharing your talent. And how cool is that? So we are almost done here. Super cool. And what I like about this method is that it's, I don't have to know how to draw. No. Like I don't have to have that talent, which I don't really have. So this is awesome because I follow along. No, I can't draw a thing. Uh, but this is perfect because then I can easy. just follow along and mm -hmm. do it. Really easy. But it's also a lot of fun to be able to put a little bit of your own mark onto this. So in the instructions, you'll find that there are detailed instructions on the paint color and everything. See, when I can, when I can do this, and I don't have to try and figure out where my pattern was. That's a great tip. It, it works out really good. And of course, I missed one of the really important ones. Luann is watching, checking in from Austin, Texas, Hill Country. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Love Texas. So here we go. So I'm just, I'm just keeping a lookout to see exactly what I have done and what to I see haven't. any spots that you might have missed and I miss a lot <laughs> but it's okay so let's look here so pretty much I think I have got him and I'm going to do this line on top okay so now we're going to follow our little pattern here of what Sandy we're said doing. I can't draw but I can trace you exactly can trace. That's, that's exactly right. what I but actually, if you think about it, tracing is actually drawing because you're actually drawing something onto a piece of paper. So it's really kind of cool. All right, so we have our little guy here. We've traced him down. And now we are gonna start on the basics. So because the white's already in here, there's a couple spots on here that already have white, um, like his teeth and in between his pants. And because I made a couple little mistakes, I am going to grab, I have a little. Oh yeah, I wanna see, can you tell me on there okay. where the mistakes are? Cause I don't can even you see show them. Me? You can't? <laughs> no. You can't see them, okay. So right here, I've got a double mistake. So you can oh. see I've got two lines. And right here, I have a little line. So I have this really cool non-smudge eraser. I love these, I love these. If you can invest into anything great, get yourself a non-smudge eraser. So I am just gonna take this and so I'm gonna gently. Heather push. said, very cute. Aw, thanks Heather. Katie said, you are amazing. Aw, Katie rock. Robin says, hello. Hi Robin, I hope you're doing good. All our crafting friends here, so cool. So I can tell you right now, I missed a couple of spots. So I'm gonna have to actually. In that case, do you go back and retrace with the, the carbon paper or do you just nope. do it, do you freehand it? I'm gonna it? freehand it. So sorry, dad, if I made a mistake. So I'm actually gonna go like this and just kind of add it in. There you go. Cause I didn't actually do that bottom piece. So pretty much he is traced, everything is traced on here. You want to make sure that where you're going to have light colors, you want to make sure you don't have any smudge marks. Um, it's really, really important. And if you want to um, follow the instructions on here, you can also change the colors a little bit to suit what you like. So again, it's kind of all about your, your style. Charity says, hey. Hey, hey Charity. Hi. We love having everybody here. So this is, I'm gonna do his face first. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually painting, I'm gonna paint around like his eyes and different things that are on there. I'm not actually gonna just base coat the whole thing. So you'll see when I start painting this. Cause it really is a good, easy process. What kind of paint are you using? Um, this is actually from Waverly. So this is a green and it is, I'm trying to think of the color again. It's called Fern. So um, if you don't have the right colors at your house, use what you have as close as possible. And it's and like an acrylic? Fun. It's acrylic paint, it's from Waverly. Um, I do like Waverly because it has a very consistent pigment. And so mm. I, like, I like the pigment on that quite a bit. 
So I'm just going to take a small brush here, get it wet, and then I am going to put a little bit of this paint right here. And a little bit goes a long ways, so you don't actually have to use a ton of it. And we're just going to paint. Because not only is his face green, his hands are green. So I'm just going to start. <laughs> He's cute. He is. And you know what? Frankensteins with green faces, we have to be extra, extra special and love them more. <laughs> you know, it's like half, he probably was half leprechaun, I don't know, <laughs> when they were fixing him up. But I mean, see how easy, it's just, you know, you'll want to get this pattern and you'll want to just make sure that um, you do a bunch of stuff with it because not only can you make um, the little Frankenstein, but you also can add and make a few more things from it. So we know Sandy is a regular based on her question. Check Sandy's it out. That's awesome. Oh, how about using, of course, some sparkle? <gasps> okay. <laughs> but glow in the dark paint. That would be cool. I brought glow in the dark paint. <laughs> And I brought sparkles, and I promised my dad that I wouldn't put sparkles on his. So <laughs> I love that. It's a great idea, Sandy. You're awesome because, you know, you just, you know, you can't have too much. So I'm just going to go right here and just kind of go over these lines. You'll be able to see some of these lines after it dries. But you're going to get the gist of it, um, of just how easy it is to paint. Boy, how much fun it'll look when it's done. You'll have such a cute, cute little Frankenstein with these little sad eyes. His eyes always have gotten to me. I've seen this pattern for many years, and I always thought he was just such a friendly. Sandy said, woohoo, the Shea way. The Shea way. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And what, if, I don't know, you know, I just, I'm so excited for Halloween because you know this pattern will look really good you know in your front foyer you could put some lights behind it um you know like sandy if you put sparkles on it you'll get yeah it'll look really good so we're just going to base coat a lot of this today but i just want to show you how easy it is and i want to make sure i'm doing everything right but it's so fun he's just a good guy and if you're wondering where can I get this Frankenstein so I can do it, can do one for myself, well, well, mondomarkettv.com is where you go. With your kit, you'll get the cutout. I have it written down here. You'll get the wood kit to make this cute Frankenstein. He comes with the cutout and the wood base, as well as two screws, screws, the patterns and instructions. This way you just follow along and enjoy the ride, really. It'll be super fun. Mm -hmm. And during the next 24 hours, we have a cool special going on. So go there right now, mondomarkettv.com, so that you can create your cute Frankenstein. It's fantastic. You don't even have to have, you don't even have to know how to draw because it's nope. there for you. You can see here the process of creation. It's fantastic. It's all done. That's the point is if yes. the pattern is already created for you, you just get to take it and run with it. That's what's really cool. And I know, you know, at first when you look at stuff that's been painted and you're like, oh, that's not real cute. This is all a base coat. <laughs> so just remember, this is what we're doing today is base coating, and then we'll add, you know, I can add details in later. But, I mean, it really is a cute, fast pattern to do. And I don't know about you, but I know people who have actually collections of Halloween Frankensteins, Halloween Draculas, and Halloween mummies for Halloween that they put up in their house. Like, literally, just tons of different things. So, so if you're like that and you have a little collection, he's perfect to add. And we're just going to add a little bit more to his face. And he stands on a stand, so you don't have to worry about him tipping over or, or moving around. He has a little stand that you'll screw in. And, um, oh my gosh, you'll never have to worry about it breaking or, you know, MDF is pretty strong. I can't say it won't, you know, if you throw it against the wall, it's not going to break. But it's pretty close. And sometimes, uh, you know, MDF with it being this thin it's not super heavy so you're not getting a big bulky thing you're actually getting something very nice and delicate and we're just gonna keep painting this little guy 
And I love when you, you'll have a colored picture in your pattern, and so you can reference to like the things that you're doing. So you can look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's where this is, oh yeah. So here we go. And how fun could he be? I kind of think about maybe my dad should have gotten a wife too for him, or a little kid or, you know, brother or something. But see, easy. Once you put that, um, that gesso on it too, it helps your paint to go on smooth and not um, crumbly, because we don't want crumbly paint. But I mean, fun, 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 fun. And if you're gonna have a Halloween party like the um, people who get together for the witches' parties and then they do their Halloween decor, this would be perfect. This kit would just be a great addition. So here we go. I love his fingernails too. I think it's really cool when they put like cute little fingernails on him. Mm -hmm. He needs a manicure. So there we go. So now we base coated his face, his and his hands and his fingers. And um, you're gonna do one more coat on his face and one more coat on his hands. So now we are gonna go and do his jacket. So his jacket is a gray toned jacket and I am gonna use another acrylic paint and it's just gray. So really, really good color and really easy color. Um, on some of my other tool painting we've got floating and in this one there is no floating. You're just adding details. So it's really kind of cool. So let's grab another paintbrush. And I love these flat. Um, this is, I think, a number six. So this is a flat head six. It is awesome. And we're just going to paint. So check it out. Remember, this is his. Now see, this is where painting comes in. That's a piece of his thumb that I missed. So when we go through and do this, you'll wanna make sure that you're following the pattern and just making sure that you're not um, missing anything because you don't wanna paint it a different color and then have to go back and paint it. So on your color photo, you're gonna be able to have it right in front of you and just follow it. Follow everything that the instructions say and you will do just fine. So we're gonna base his little jacket here. These are his screws that are coming out of his neck, which is really quite cool. He's got kind of a lightning, a little bit of a lightning feeling to him. Um, he also, the collar is going to be a little bit darker. So just remember when you're doing this, I'm gonna actually cover his collar right here, but we're gonna actually add a little bit of darker color to it. So a darker gray. And um, in your pattern, when you get it, it'll tell you the colors that we used. And, um, and if you need to mix colors, I actually have that um, formula as well. So if you're into mixing the acrylics and you don't wanna go out and buy paint, it'll, we can show you how to do that. We're just gonna get that here. Don't go over your pockets, because the pockets are a different color. So just kinda give it a little bit. And even though I didn't go over the, the little buttonholes very good, I mean, that's gonna be from a, a nice stylist, so you don't really have to make those perfect. But I mean, you know, while you're sitting there talking with your girlfriends, get a couple kits and have at it. This is a great project to do together with friends. Mm, it really is. And you know what? I can guarantee you everybody's will turn out different. Yes. Everybody's will turn out different because we all have a different style about us. Um, you know, my dad has a totally different style than me. He's really good. But I, I have a different style and I think I do pretty good. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you use your Frankenstein. You display it on a table, on a for table. example. A buffet. See, he would be really cute sitting in the middle of a buffet table and he's got, 
you know, Halloween pumpkins and different things that are all around, he would be so cute. And like a little happy Halloween sign. I mean, I mean, there's so many different options that you can do. Or if you want him, you could put him in a wreath. I think he'd be adorable really? in a wreath. If you had a front door wreath and you wanted to add just a little bit more to the middle of it, I would put a screw hook up in the top here and mm -hmm. I would actually hook him to a wreath that has a bunch of Halloween oh. decor. But my decor around the wreath, I would match it to his colors and then add just a little bit of orange for a pop. That would be fun. That would be so cute. I mean, personality wise, when people look at it, they would be like, oh, he's so cute. And they're like, yeah, I did this. I painted this. So I'm just going to turn this around. And see, this is his color, but I'm actually going to I'm gonna go over it with a darker gray. And so we're just going to kind of. And this is just a kind of a quick demo to just show you how, how easy it is, how fun it is, and how much fun you're going to have when you paint him. And if you are really adventurous, um, you could also um, do him in different colors. So you don't necessarily have to do the green face. You can change it. Totally up to you guys. But I mean, I love, I love painting. I love everything, actually, that has to do with crafting. It's a lot of fun. These kits are so much fun to do, too. They really are. They're fun. By the way, if you're like, wait, what kits? Where can I get a kit? I want a kit too. Well, mondomarkettv.com is where you go to get yours. Super duper kit. It comes with the wood cut cutout of the Frankenstein. It comes with the wooden base. It comes with two screws, as well as the pattern for you to create this and the instructions. This way you can follow along, trace it just like Shalin showed you, and you'll be on your, uh, you'll really <laughs> truly enjoy the process and on your way to create a fantastically cute Frankenstein. Yeah. During the next 24 hours, we have a cool special going on, introductory special, so go there right now, mondomarkettv.com is where you go. There you go. And you know, these are unique patterns. These are not yes. patterns you find. You, you won't find these anywhere no. else. No, you will not. It's, these are, these are very unique and very specific to, um, to Sanders designs. So you will like, we have some other stuff coming up, um, you know, in the future from them too. And they're really cute. And what I like also about this, aside from the fact that it's super adorable uh, and easy to create, I love the fact that it's in the MDF wood because it's light. Yes. So when you're talking about really creating light. a reef or something mm -hmm. like that, a reef, it's, it's perfect. Well, and it's not going to interfere. Um, pine is great. I love pine. I love painting on pine. But the problem with pine is every time I've had a wreath that has something on it that's made from pine and the wind comes up and blows it even though it's secured if it blows against my door it snaps oh. and it can snap in half where the sap lines are so then it's like oh my gosh so then you have a glue line that you're trying to fix this this doesn't do this this will dent but it will not shatter in half that's awesome so i really i really do like that and um i would paint your sides you can take the pattern and kind of mimic it to the back and paint the back if you wanted it to be full circle if you're putting it on a table. Mm, so okay. that, that is something to like think do about. Behind, uh, behind his head, that kind of thing. Yeah, so oh. like if you were doing the pattern, you could just kind of, if you draw, if you, you know. You know what, I think I might add a bonus to this kit. I think I'm yeah. gonna add the back to it. Okay. And then you can do it front and back. So in your kit, you'll get the cutout, you'll get the wooden frame, yep. you'll get the pattern, the instructions, but you're not only going to get the front mm -hmm. pattern, you'll also get the behind the pattern, back pattern, the back pattern. Back pattern. <laughs> yes, because if you want to do that and actually make it a complete craft, I'm big on painting the backs of your crafts. I'm uh -huh. big on it. I feel like it's really important that you should have your crafts totally finished in that sense. So I... Um, I love seeing things in the back. And if you have a complete one and it's on a Lazy Susan with a big Halloween floor, oh my yeah. gosh. And little spiders and little tea lights and this little guy sitting here and you got a little purple tea lights. Oh <laughs> my gosh. 
Seriously, it would be so cute. He would just be adorable. You are definitely a fan of the holidays, huh? I love like holidays. all of them. I love. I you know I I just love the fact that you can create things every holiday, and what you create you can give away or you can sell. So for me, I love the fact that I can create something and either give it to somebody I love, or I can sell it to somebody who wants to share my talent. I think it's fabulous. So I'm so a big crafting fan. Let's say I am going to do a, a show and mm -hmm. I would like to sell some de uh, Halloween decor. Mm -hmm. How much would you sell this little Frankenstein for? Oh, this little guy, easily I would sell him. If he's like this with just a little, um, maybe an orange or black bunch of um, mesh or something, because you want to add a little bit of bling to it, um, I would sell him for like $24. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to be able to pay for your time and you need to be able to do a craft that is um, not super easy, fast, and it just looks sloppy. You want a craft that's easy to do, fast to produce, and looks adorable. So I, at least 20, 24 $25, depending on your area. You can, in other areas, if you did him with a little like circle like this and you had a little bit of a floral around it or something to do with Halloween and little spiders and you really dolled it up, you could get $75 for it. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on how much you put into it. So that's a great question because kits like this, you could mass produce, you know, the wood comes right in it, basically it doesn't take long to sand, it's been cut with a CNC router, so, you know, doesn't doesn't take that much. But here again, I mean, I'm gonna use a burnt umber, and I went between the lines right there. Sometimes if you spit, you can actually pull the paint off of your, what you're painting on. It's really <laughs> kind of cool. So burnt umber. Sometimes if you spit. Sometimes use your spit. It's got <laughs> enough acid in it that it'll actually, um, it'll actually take it and rub that paint right off. It's true. I've been helping mm -hmm. Shahar remodel her new camper, oh, and every once so in a while cool. I'll hit the wooden top, and it's like, yep, and it works. <laughs> this works. It's a really good trick, and um, I've watched it, and actually, my dad probably doesn't remember this, but I actually watched him doing it when I was little, so when he was creating things. So I always knew that if I just spit a little bit on my finger, and you can tell where the paint was because it's on my finger, but um, it'll just take it right off. So again, burnt umber, we're not going to do a lot of floating on this. You're just going to do um, a little bit of detail work. So let's go right here and get these pants in. And again, I, like I say, the formula is in here if you're going to mix your paint. So there will be a formula. And it's really quite fun. My dad is a super artist, so... He can do just about anything, and that's where I got my love for art. And I got my love for baking from my mom. So, you know. <laughs> now, I know this looks really rough, but it is your base coating, and you're just trying to get this, um, your base coat on. Make sure you paint your sides. Uh, for time's sake, I'm actually not gonna paint all the sides. Um, but you wanna make sure you paint all your sides. If you're gonna do the back, um, do your back first before you paint your front. And the reason why is you're gonna have little dots and little daubs here and there. And you, if you're gonna paint the front first and then you flip it over and paint the back, when you flip it back, your everything's gonna be smashed or roughed up. So make sure you paint your back first if you start that. But once you do your second coat on it, It'll add, oh my gosh, it just adds so much more character. It doesn't look so rough. So there's the base coat for the pants. And if you're a crafter and a painter like I am, I love to see new things and new challenges. So this is a new pattern. You, I promise you will be the only person on your block that has this pattern at your house which is really quite cool. Because the generic stuff where everybody has the same thing gets kind of boring. Mm, totally does. Totally. I, I'm, I'm all for not, let's not be generic, let's be unique. 
So now I'm going to paint his hair and his feet. We're going to do just plain black. So again, this one's a Waverly. So whatever paint acrylic paints you have in your area, that's I would go with what you're comfortable with. We'll give you the colors. You just kind of match them up to see if, if that's what you like. And I forgot, I had my little tabbies on here. And um, this is a, I like this paint, especially because it is a little bit glossy. So it has more of a, a real shine to it. So we'll get a little bit on here. And a little bit goes a long ways, and that's what's really cool about these acrylic paints because um, you can you can use these, and you could do two or three Frankenstein's with just a bottle of paint, almost you know. Yeah, over. that's nice. So let's get some black in here. But he starts coming to life once mm -hmm. you start adding in a few more details here and there. He just starts showing his true colors. It's really cool. And you can name him whatever you want. My, we named this one Frank. <laughs> but if you want to do, you know, Frank in Stein and do a little welcome. There's so many cute Halloween things you can, you can write and say with him too. Maybe we'll have to give him a girlfriend or something one day. <laughs> He'll have that little, the one that has the white streak in her hair. We could make something like her. But again, see, it just starts changing everything. And if you're like me and you like to watch, you know, a few movies here and there and do your crafts, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. And he's coming to life. Oh. Yeah, he totally is. Just put a little hair on him. You get that little black on there. It yeah. starts changing the whole thing. In fact, I think I'll paint, hurry and paint his. By the way, his Sandy hair. said, I have a new one. Let's be Shay Leek. Like, I think like unique <laughs> Shay Leek. Shay Leek, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Sandy, you are awesome. I'm going to steal that because I am definitely unique. <laughs> I'm not your common, uh, common grandma, I guess you call me. I don't know. But, yeah, just make sure. I know on, on my, uh, the other one over here, the back is just black, and you're welcome to do that. Don't think you have I'm gonna to. I'm going to show you. Check it out. Yes, show the back. Cause Boom. You don't it's have black. to do it. But you did do the, the sides or no? Yeah, you did yep. the sides. I got gotcha. you. Sides are done. You can see there. Here's the other side. And um, here's the a clue with the MDF that I've learned over the years. Try not to get a paint that's watery because MDF will soak that in if it doesn't have the gesso on the top. Gesso, gesso. <laughs> Somebody correct me on that. I'm not quite sure. Um, the watery paint will actually soak into the wood and then it raises the little fibers and oh. then you have to re-sand again. So try and get a paint that actually has just a little bit of um, thickness to it. There's a, a thicker part of it, so it's not so, um, yeah, because there's nothing like starting to paint your project, then all of a sudden you realize there's all these little bumps all over it, and you're like, now I have to go back and do it. Sandy said, common and normal is boring. That's totally right, Sandy. Agree. Yeah. That is right. We would rather be unique than to be like everybody else. I like being, um, as my mother-in-law used to tell me, me and my husband are cultured and cultivated because <laughs> we're, we're so different in so many different ways. So see, now that he's got his little feet, and it's okay to paint over the lines on his feet, even though I traced him, because you kind of get the gist... I don't know about you, but I'm a, I'm a hands-on person, so when I trace over something, and even if I paint over it, I have an idea of where it's at. So that's a painter's thing, I think. I'm not sure, but. So Bree said, Bree. doing a great job. I know your dad is proud. Oh, thanks, Will Bree. there be more for a Halloween collection? Yes. 
<laughs> in fact do you want to see we got a so, surprise for next week this one's for next week Dracula. isn't he cute he's adorable yes oh, let me he's, see even oh he's uh, so cute look at him he's super cute and I'll tell you too, I have a, a cute little um, haunted house set that's just small, that's kind of a background that I found um, actually today. I had another lady tell me about it and it is darling and I'm going to put it with him because, oh my heck, <laughs> could you imagine that cute setting with these two guys on yes. your kitchen table or on her Oh yeah, or, I mean, oh my gosh. Look, let's put them side by mm -hmm. side, let's see if they... If I can get them in the camera here. They're so but cute. But look how cute they are. I mean, you can kind of see with their, look, little Drac. Super fun. Little Drac, little Frank. Yes. So, yeah. Yes, we are. And then there'll be um, just probably a couple more with our Halloween stuff that I think you're really going to like. Bree said he is adorable oh. with like three exclamation marks. Thanks, Bree. <laughs> you know, um, it's so fun to have such unique things, um, you know, to do. And you're not doing the same thing over and over and over again. But when you do it and you add your twist to it, it's even better because it's unique and it's you. It's who you are. Uh, Pre said, very cute. Oh. Kay said, it's Jesso with a soft G. Jesso. 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 Sandy said, wow. He's cute. You know what? We're going to have so much fun over the next few weeks just doing some fun holiday stuff. There's so much out there, and and uh, my brain doesn't ever stop. I don't think I don't think Good. it stops. I think it just rotates. I I go somewhere. I was I was at um, one of the local hospitals the other day, and they were throwing away some stuff there, and I was like, oh, I think I could make a craft out of that. So you know, when we have our little brains that that keep multiplying and doing stuff, it, it's just cool. So I want to paint over the face again because. I want to show you how much the second coat actually adds. And I need the right brush to do my second coat. And what de determines, what defines the right brush? Okay, for me, when I'm doing um, a base coat, I don't care about the brush. Okay. I, I, you know, I want a flat brush or an angle brush. But when I'm doing the, the top coat, I want it to be smooth. And so I actually change the fibers so these are more of a camel hair fiber and these are just more of a synthetic fiber so i usually use synthetic to base and a camel hair or an animal hair based paintbrush to do my final mm. and it's just because it's smoother the i mean you can tell these are just a little cheapy it doesn't really matter if they break type brush this one is just a tad more expensive so and it's a number eight i think uh, eight flat shader so this is what I use but I'll show you how this just changes because the brush is really smooth oh and I my just got strokes are smoother oh yeah. sorry no <laughs> completely off topic I just got it's Pris like Chris not pre like I've been saying oh Pris <laughs> hi <laughs> Pris is uh, Pris is an artist and I uh, she has amazing stuff so, Pris, I hope I'm, I'm doing this justice here. <laughs> but see how smooth that this brush is compared to the synthetic? Uh-huh. I just, um, synthetics are good for, you know, my basing and all that, but I really do like the animal hair type brushes for a smoother, smoother finish. By the way, don't forget Get your kit, get your Frankenstein kit yes. at mondomarkettv.com. It comes with the wooden cutout, it comes with the wooden base, all made in MDF, fantastic and perfect wood for this project, very light. Comes with the pattern, the instructions, and the pattern for the front of the, fr of, of the Frankenstein, as well as the, the back. back. Now, <laughs> yes, so uh, it comes with two screws, so definitely get it. We have an introductory price going on. Mondo Market TV is where you go to get yours, okay? And you'll just love it. Yes. You'll love the kit. You'll love how it's done. Now, see, I need to fix my ear right here. You'll get to the point where when you see a pattern and, you know, you start painting a lot. And Chris knows this. A lot of people know this is, 
you start feeling out the pattern and what you can and cannot do and and kind of where you want things to be. But I, I, I'm just so in love with little Frank that, that um, you know, my Frankensteins don't really look like this because mine are a little bit more cutesy and sparkly. <laughs> Sandy, you get me, you understand. But, so there you go. So that's just kind of how it adds that little second coat. Pris said, thanks for the plug, Shalid. Oh, Pris is good. She's really good. You know, I, I, I love having everybody who shows up every week and just to enjoy and to see what we're demoing for the week, the kits that we're doing, because they're, they're a lot of fun. Really, they are a lot of fun. Kim said, the Dracula is cute, too. He yes, is. he's adorable. He is. And uh, Bree said, and Drac has a bat. I got, got to have a bat. <laughs> yes. He does have a bat. And you know what's going to be really interesting with Drac? Right here. Itty bitty. He's a little, and you know, he's got this little itty bitty necklace cross too. Oh. He's just, he's just cute. a clever Dracula. Yes, super cute. So we'll have a lot of fun with him next week, and I'll kind of show you some, some things that I found that I thought would be really fun to go with him. And I will, um, maybe I'll show you a few things about Dra or, uh, Frank too, that you can add, just to give you an idea. But these kits are fabulous. Kim and when, is, pardon? Oh, sorry. sorry. Kim is asking, do you sell the kit for Drac as well? Yes. yes, yes. There'll be a kit for both of them. MondoMarketTV.com. Yep. So I'm just going to do the edges. See, here's the problem when you're a painter, and then you start seeing things, and then you start painting, and you want to do more. And, you know, for time's sake, we can't do it all, but we can sure try. So his shirt, um, I am actually going to do kind of a, a reddish, a light red. I'm going to just this on here now see I have to say now I'm not going to use this because see how liquidy that just came yeah did you see how liquidy that was when I poured it out so I'm going to use it just a different one because I I don't want that to I if you do a liquidy on, a, on the gesso you're going to end up having to do two or three more coats so I try I try really hard to find the paints that are really really good and um Let's see if this one is as liquidy. Kind of. We'll try it and see. I think the heat, we are having a heat wave, and sometimes my paint ends up in the car and gets just a little bit hot. So we are going to add his shirt here. So see, we're doing this fast. If you were watching like Oh, some Halloween shows from the 60s and 70s that are, you know, not scary like the ones today. You could hurry and whip him up in no time. And, like I say, we're giving you the pattern and we're giving you the colors. But if you decide that you want to do a purple shirt on him or an orange, go for it. That'd be awesome. I think it would be a really cool look. So basically, we've base coated him close to an hour. When you get the kit, the, the Frankenstein or the Dracula, they are already cut with a CNC router, so they, aren't, they don't have a lot of slivers on the sides or broken um, wood, so there's not a ton of sanding to do. They're basically ready for you yeah. to paint and have fun. They really are. CNC routers have such a clean edge to them that, oh my gosh. You can do all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to kind of add him in here. But see, while we're talking, you can base coat. So the kits, the kits are going to be fun, fun to do. I don't know about you, how many of you out there love to paint in the middle of the night? Or am I the only one who could just get lost painting? <laughs> <laughs> Does your mom paint at night or craft at night? Oh, yeah, every night. Yeah. Every night. Like, we'll do Netflix. We'll watch Netflix at night, and she can't just sit and watch. She has to be doing something. I think that's She's awesome. always doing something. I think it's awesome because it's a talent, and 
it's a talent that uh, to just be able to craft and do stuff. So see, there's his little, and I'll put a little bit of white over that when I, when I do it. So we're really base coating this quite fast. And he is going to be fun when he is done. And I probably will add sparkles. <laughs> but that's OK. That's all right. We're going to do his little patches. And I would definitely do the patch on the side, um, the same color as the patch on the front. Kim said, me, I do my best work about 2 AM. Good going, Kim. <laughs> yes. Yes, that validates me. I don't feel so bad. I really do get lost doing, you know, when I start thinking about kits and doing stuff like this. And this kit is just going to be a lot of fun because I'm going to add a lot to him. But see, so we are just about to the point where we'll do some more base coating. And he'll be done probably, if I stay here and do this, it'd probably take me another hour and he'd be completely done. So it's about a two hour craft. And how fun is that? It's and fantastic. You can do this. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You can do this. It's, I love it that it comes with the pattern. You tape it on there, trace it. Yep. Boom, you don't have to worry about being knowing how to paint and draw and things like that. Yep. And then you grab your paint and you really grab your favorite beverage and just yep. really enjoy, enjoy yourself doing this. And just start. That's what's really cool about, um, you know, when you start doing crafts that have a lot of personality to them and you start watching them come to life, I, I love it. I think it's so cool to see their personality come out because it's actually your personality you're painting. So you add your flair to it. So I base coated those sides. I'm gonna, I'm gonna base coat the other sides and then I'll show you what the complete base coat is. And then once you start doing details, do your details the way that you like them. You can look at the picture and the picture will show you exactly where to do the details, but I want you to just kind of go with the flow and freehand it. So just give yourself the opportunity to to run with it and make it look your own. Because that's what we do. We buy our crafts, we do them, and then we make them our own. And then we show off. <laughs> yes, we do. And that's when you send us pictures <laughs> so we can see. But see, there you go. And you can do his ears like on the side if you wanted to add his ears going up on your the sides here, you can do that a little bit too. But he's just cute. Little friendly, little friendly Frank. And there we have the base coating. We'll do a little bit of yellow in his eyes. The cool thing about um, when you do a character, when you finally get his eyes done, he literally changes it's so cool to watch because it's like the personality shines through and there he is and you know who it is and I'll have to do a second coat on that gray but I mean ta-da and now we're gonna do just a little bit of yellow so the yellow goes on his fingernails it goes on his eyes and it goes on his bolts so the yellow is perfect for this. See, that's thick. That's good paint. So now we're just going to take a small, um, I think this is a, a 10, oh my gosh, I can't see that, a little 10 liner. I like that yellow. It's bright. Nice huh? and bright. Bright. Kay. Kay. Boom. You know? <laughs> Kay said, you have inspired me to make Halloween art dolls now. Oh, Kay, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. That's the way it's supposed to be. And I think, Kay, uh, I think you're in Australia. Is that correct? Oh, down under. Okay, so we're adding that yellow to his eyes. Oh. Now, have you noticed in some characters, well, most of your characters, you do white. Frankenstein has yellow eyes. And he has just a little bit of touch of red in the top of his eyes. So we're going to just give him a little 
So basically we've just shown you today how to base coat little Frank. So when you get your kit, um, you know, like I say, if you're gonna do the back and you want it to match the front, start on the back. And then when you turn it over, do your front and then that way you're not gonna smash anything that you've done on here as far as, um, you know, little dots or things like that that can smush down. So he's got his little yellow eyes, so he's coming to life. Uh -huh. He's got his little personality showing. Are you gonna show us, once we base coat it, what to do? Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm gonna show you some of the different techniques. So like on his shoes, he has like a purple tone to his shoes, but it's kind of more, of, <laughs> I don't know, when you see it, you'll understand. So you have more of this, the bird umber onto his shoes, but then you're gonna have yellow um, strings and little dots. So you'll wanna make sure that, you know, we keep our colors consistent and then they match each other. And the lining is the thing um, a lot of people are really intimidated by. If you don't wanna line this with a pen, uh, paintbrush and black paint to use a liner brush, you can use the marker. It will be thinner, your lines will be thicker, or thinner, but you will have just a different look. It'll be a little bit thinner. This is done with a complete paintbrush. So, let's see here. And if you use the marker, what kind? Marker, what kind? It's like a paint marker? Mine or is a just a non-acetone scrapbook marker that's okay. permanent, it has to be permanent. And, um, you want to make sure it's non-acetone and you want to make sure that if you spray it, it's not going to um, bleed because you don't want to do your, your craft and then all of a sudden you find that it's bloody, you know, because it's all, we don't want to do that. So again, I'm just going to add a few yellow spots for his fingernails. And you'll want to watch the pattern when you're doing this. So you're gonna to wanna to watch everything that you're doing for him. So let's see, I'm gonna do the buttons really quick. And I use the end of my, my paintbrush, so I just dip it in. And this is how I make my little buttons. The, the other end of it. Yep, the other end of the paintbrush, I just take it in and go like this. And they're perfectly, perfect little round perfect buttons. Perfect little round buttons. But it's just easier to do it that way because you um, you always have that round edge. So looking at my pattern here, I'm going to use, I have a script liner. I like these a lot. And I'm gonna do the shoes and some of the face for you. And this is all lined with black. So you're doing, you know, a black, line with a script liner and I think this one is a zero pretty sure a zero script so so then basically then you get your pattern mm -hmm. you put it next to your piece mm -hmm. and you kind of just follow you along just start looking okay. yeah because you've got everything traced on you can retrace over it here's the thing with that is if you start retracing over a lot of your lines you're gonna have smudge lines we don't want smudge lines. So we want to make sure that it's very, very smooth. So we're just going to take our liner brush here and like right here on his pants, just going to make that line. And I just pull it in. I put it in my paint and then I just kind of round the, or pull the top of it a little bit so I don't have a ball at the end. And then I just start lining. And don't forget that if you're wondering, okay, where can I get this cool kit? Where can I get this cutout of the adorable Frank? And where can I get the pattern? Go to mondomarkettv.com and you can get the Frankenstein pattern. The wooden Frankenstein pattern is fantastic. It comes with the Frankenstein uh, cutout in MDF, which is a fantastic 
uh, wood for you, especially because it's light. So if you're creating, planning on creating Frank for him to hang uh, with the uh, on your door with a wreath, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that. If you want him to be on a little stand, it comes with a little wooden stand. It comes with two screws, the instructions, and then the patterns. So the patterns for the the front of Frankenstein. So you can have his little body, his little jacket, yep. his little nails, his little eyes, all of that and the pattern for the back. So the if back. you're like, well, I'm gonna put this on a table and I need it to display nicely, but people need to be impressed by the back side of it as well, you'll have that pattern for you to trace just the same and paint it. It's a very fun project, extremely cute, quick to do. You don't have to have drawing skills because mm -mm. the way that it's done, you can just trace it on and, and really just enjoy that process of painting. It's like a meditative process. Yeah. 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 So mondomarkettv.com is where I'd like you to go right now. We have an introductory price going, so take advantage of that. Yes. You can actually get Frank and you can get the Drac as well. We're going to show at the next episode of uh, Crafting with Shalin, we'll paint together the Drac. The Dracula. But you you can you can already get it and this way we can literally paint it together next yes. week how about that <laughs> that would be a lot of fun i think that would be a blast yes we could just all paint together step by step that would be awesome so i am just kind of following the lines i already have i love this the script um the script paintbrush because for me, I like to be able to do long, sleek lines, and I don't have to worry about it um, stopping. When you have a small little script, sometimes you you run out of paint before you run out of you know what you're doing. So it's a script brush. It's a script brush that has it's this one is a zero, and there are longer ones. I actually have longer ones. So when I do something that I want to make a really long line for, I I totally whip that out. So we are going to, and we're just going to keep adding our detail. So detail is really important. And I would have base coated um, his body probably one more time, his jacket and stuff. So, you know, this is just like I say, this is just kind of a. For you to see the process. This is to see the process because. So you would paint it once over. I would paint one this more. one more time and probably the green just a little bit more because I want it as smooth as possible. So don't be afraid to do two or three coats. It's all good. So buttonholes, I don't pull it and get the ball off the end. I actually will just kind of pull this. And we'll just make these little buttonholes. The script, um, you have to have a lot of patience when you're doing this just to do it. So go slow when you're doing your final touches, go slow. You don't have to, to race to, to get it to come off. And sometimes too, I'm gonna show you another trick. So mm, sometimes, I, like tricks. I love tricks, I do too. I'm like totally. So when I don't wanna put a whole big pattern down with the carbon paper and everything this is what I do so I just rub my pencil you guys know this from school so I just rub my pencil on there and I have that carbon and then I'm just gonna put it right down but I already have this is already wet so I probably want to wait just a minute but um, you get the gist of it so we're just lining Keep lining, keep lining, keep lining. And like his eyes, we'll put a little black and then when we, we can go over the top with the red. And what I'll do is next week when we do Dracula, I'm gonna bring this little guy back with me and I'm gonna show you how oh, I completely yeah. finished him. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna display him on my table. So you'll totally go, oh my gosh. Let's just get his little eyes in there. They just, you know, when you start adding all this in, it just makes it a little bit happier. I should have brought my readers, man. Okay. And there we go, get, getting his eyes into there. My problem is, is sometimes I will actually make a mistake and then I start making it bigger. 
because I think, oh, I'll just add just a little bit more to that. But he's going to be super darn cute when I'm done with him. So we just added his little, little eyes there. And then get his pants. Let's see. And when you follow the pattern, just make sure that when you're looking at it, find the little baby details. But the, the tiniest details are going to be in the picture because when you start adding things in and start doing things, that's where the end of the details is going to be. You'll see where it's been um, lightly put a little bit of white. You're going to have little bits of brown and black. So that right there is going to help a lot. And I love pictures. I love just being able to see what's on the pictures. And we're just going to add it in. So again, little Frank is just grabbing his personality and running with it. And two, if you have any questions when you get your kits, you can always email me here. Mm -hmm. And I can help you with your kits. Info at mondomarkettv.com. Yep, I would love to help you if whatever you need, if you have questions or whatever you need. So I'm going to add the detail to the shoes. So I'm just going to add this right here. And he just has And for the details, do you have to wait until the other paint is completely dry? Yes, I would um, because you'll end up mixing colors and then they'll turn it'll turn kind of a different look but you know you can still add like on the bottom of his shoe you could end up adding and I'll just do it right here you could add little lines if you want for the bottom of his shoes so the patterns are basic for your idea and then just add your little personality to add it. your flair add your flair do it your way you know I've always talked about the Shea way because I really, <laughs> I really like doing things that fit my personality. But see, you can just add a little bit to that. So again, you know, leave your creativity up to what you want to do when you get the patterns, when you get the kit, just start creating and follow your patterns. So we've got the little three things right here and then again on the little um, dots just turn your brush over and just do your three dots do, do, do. easy and there you go so basically, there's the gist of what we're doing in the Super kit. Super cute. Super cute. And I will have him finished. Can I, may I pick yes. him up? Yes. You can pick him up. And Alec, look at this, how adorable he is. He's getting there. Yeah. Super cute, He's huh? definitely getting there, so. Yes, but the little details that you add at the end really make a, a difference and difference. adds the, the personality to it him. It really does. So study your picture when you get it. Study all the little lines that are inside. Um, in fact, can we show Frank real quick that one? Uh huh. So in his um, his like his jacket, he's got the little tiny like rough mark lines. There's little white lines into his t-shirt. I mean, there's just so many different tinier details. Um, if you notice, you know, I'm going to go back in and fill his top with a darker gray. That's the collar onto his jacket. So make sure when you're looking at it, add the details and then add your details to it. So these are just the, your basic details. There's character marks all over his pants and his jacket. So make sure you add those in. And it will look really cute. Yes. So. And if you're like, okay, well, wait, where can I get this awesome cutout and uh, this kit? And where can I create this beautiful piece? Well, mondomarkettv.com is where you go. You'll get in your kit, you'll get the Frankenstein cutout. It will include instructions, reference pictures, of course, as well as the patterns. This way, you don't have to worry about knowing how to draw it. Mm -hmm. You do what she did here. You put the carbon paper, then your pattern, you trace over it, and then you really just enjoy that 
process of painting, picking your colors, going. and creating an adorable Frankenstein for you to decorate your table, to put on your uh, your door, or even to sell if you sell if you sell, mm -hmm. sell things at bazaars and shows like that. So, uh, MondoMarketTV.com is where you go to get yours. Uh, don't forget, we have an introductory price. So during the next 24 yes. hours, go there, go there right now. Yes, and get yours. Okay. Shalyn, awesome. any final comments you'd like to leave our friends with today? Do you know what? I'm just excited to do next week, too, because you guys are going to start seeing some more really cool Halloween yes. looks. So we'll start putting all the different things that we're doing from Halloween together, and we'll create a little ensemble. You'll love it. This is going to be You'll super, super fun. I mean, yeah. I can't wait for next week. We're going to do the Dracula. You saw how cute he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're going to cover, uh, paint it along. And don't forget, yeah. if you get Drac right now, Next week, we can literally paint together. There you go. So I encourage you to go there right now, okay? All awesome. right, don't forget, we're here every week, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 3 Mountain, 4 Central, 5 Eastern, with Crafting with Shalit. So join us next Wednesday. And tomorrow, we have the Sparkle of Creativity show with Shahar as well. So join us next week and tomorrow, and we'll see you next time.